Hello and welcome to Program It Yourself in Java. My name is Chris and in this episode we are going to learn about enumerations and constant values. Enumerations allow us to sort of create our own data types to which we can only assign a certain amount of values. For instance, an integer can hold any kind of whole number value or a string can hold any kind of text. With enumerations, however, we can decide which values this variable can hold. Let's say we're making a video game and we need to specify whether somebody is a friend or a foe. Any other values wouldn't make any sense to us. So let's go ahead and create that enumeration. For that, we need to go outside of our main method. An enumeration starts with the enum keyword. After that, we type in the name for the enumeration. In this case, I called it type. We define the scope with the curly braces like usual. And now it's time to insert the values that we want to use. We only want to differentiate between friend and foe. Our elements are separated by a comma and we can insert as many elements as we like. Now let's go inside of our main method and create a type variable. Just like with other data types before, we can create a variable of our newly created enumeration. We also assign values the same way. Note, however, that we have to use the name of the enumeration that we want to use and use the dot separator to access its values. This is great because it really narrows down our choices. I can't assign an integer to this or a string. Only type values. Either friend or foe. A really nice thing about this is the fact that it can treat enumerations as numerical data. For instance, I could do this. Each element of an enumeration comes with the ordinal method. This represents the element position within our enumeration. So similarly to arrays, friend would be 0 and foe would be 1. This can become really useful when you're getting into more advanced techniques. For instance, you could use your type as an index to refer to a certain set of attributes within a data table. But that's just one example. Enumerations can also be used within if statements and switches. So a character in the video game could meet up with a soldier and he asks you friend or foe and then depending on your type you will give him an answer. Or something along those lines. Notice though that this time we didn't have to specify the name of the enumeration. Here we could just type in friend instead of type.friend. This is because when we switch my type we already know which enumeration we are dealing with, namely the enumeration of my type, which is type. You can also perform array-based operations on our enumeration. For instance, by using the values method we can get all of our elements as an array. As you can see here, we get the name of the method, which is values, and after the colon, we see the return type of this method. In this case, an array of type elements, which means we can treat it as such. Now it's the same thing as before. I've assigned the first element of our type enumeration to my type. Of course, we could have also stored this array first. Anyway, that's all about enumerations for now. Let's talk about constant values. Constants are containers that are initialized with a value once and cannot be changed again. 
You work with them as you would with variables, but since they hold a constant value, it doesn't make sense to call them a variable. For instance, let's work with the value pi. Whenever we are using pi in our operations, we would never ever want to change its value, because it's a constant. And a way to prevent this from happening is by using the final modifier. By using the final modifier, we declare the container pi as a constant value, meaning that from this point onward, we won't be able to change this value. If I go ahead and try anyway, we would immediately get an error. The final local variable pi cannot be assigned. If we remove the final modifier, we would be able to do that again. When you're working with constants, you usually put them inside of the class scope. That way you have access to this constant from every method inside your class. Since it's a constant, it's okay to put this in the so-called global namespace. However, it is considered bad practice to put variables in the global namespace. Variables should only exist locally within methods. This is so they get destroyed when we don't need them anymore and we separate our program logic. It doesn't make sense to have access to variables that we don't need. Anyway, this is all the time I have for this episode. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments and I'll be glad to help you out. If you want to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.